Mary Meet. Welcome back. Before we start the lesson today, I have uh, just a couple of questions that I wanted to answer. The first one is from Ash, and she's on our forum. And I, I don't know if it's a he or a she. Again, I apologize. He or she is on our forum and was having some difficulty with the, the spirit guide meditation. I just, just to real quickly, I'm not going to do, say the whole thing, but uh, this person felt some presence and felt that it did not want them disturbing it. A name popped into their head, felt as if it wrapped itself around them for a moment and began to feel very uncomfortable. The spirit then told them to go away and they were wondering if uh, they just don't want them bothering them. Okay, so that's a very good thing for us to bring up. Let's really quickly understand that we're talking about a spirit guide, not a spirit God, first of all. So we, we are looking to form a relationship with someone who is wise, that is in the spirit world, who is interested in working with us, somebody who's very advanced, more advanced than we are in certain areas, obviously, because we want them to teach us. We want them to mentor us. It's important that when you're dealing with the spirit world, none of the spirit beings are there for us to kowtow to or to bow down to, or we are not there to worship them. We are peers with them. But we also need to remember that we want to approach spirit beings with respect, just like we want to be respected. Now, having said that, if you have an experience with a, with, with a being in the spirit world that is uncomfortable, remember, you are not a guest in the spirit realm. You are a spirit. You just happen to also have a body. Okay, and they don't. That's the only difference between you as far as, you know, as far as the realm is concerned. You have every right to be there. You have every right to a spirit guide or a spirit teacher. And if, if you're getting uncomfortable feelings from a spirit, then that is obviously not a being that you want to work with. And you just say, thank you very much for sharing. And you stake out your claim. You have every right to peace and harmony and happiness within all your dealings within the craft. And if you're not getting that, it's nobody's responsibility but yours to establish that. You need to claim it. You're, you have control over your mind. You have control over your emotions. You have control over your aura. And it's up to you to determine when uh, you're dealing with a spirit that you don't enjoy dealing with to say thank you, um, but, but I don't want to work with you. Just like you do in the, in the physical world. If you have somebody around you that you don't feel comfortable with, you have every right to sever your ties with that person and put up a boundary. And nobody can make you work with anybody that you don't want to work with. Now, having said that also, you'll know that, you're, that, you're, that you've gotten uh, in touch with a guide that you want to work with if you have a sense of happiness, if you have a sense of joy, if you have a sense of, of love and a sense of connection and, oh boy, I can't wait to work with this person again and again and again, that's good. And then you want to foster that relationship. If you don't feel good, don't work with them. It's really, it's, it's just like working with people in the physical world. Remember, spirit beings are not perfect. They are, they make mistakes. They're just like us. They, they're, they're not, it's not, we're, they're not God. OK, so um, you, you want to keep looking and keep working until you find some being or a group of beings that you enjoy being with. And the, the spirit world is very, very vast. And remember, your daily spirit, spiritual purifications, grounding and centering, the orb of light exercise, all of those things will provide you with plenty of protection, plenty of cleansing so that. You do not have to feel like you are in, ever in any kind of danger. If you feel like you're in danger, stop working in the spirit world for the time being. Go back to the basics. Get your aura cleansed. Get your get yourself uh, back uh, in shape and then venture out again. I hope that answers your question. And a very good question it was, by the way. And uh, now we have, uh, let's see, Midnight uh, from the forum. 
asked an interesting question. Let me pull it up here. Oh, okay. She says, as Ariel was talking about the spirit world, a question came up for me. Is it possible for these different beings to change into other types of spirits? For example, can a nature spirit become a human spirit? Are they all different or separate, or can they change or progress in the same way the human spirits can? Okay, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not absolutely sure of absolute truth in the universe because I'm, I'm a human being and I'm you know, I'm, I, I'm just like you are, but this is my understanding and, and the way that I see things from just pure principle, all life is progressing. Everything is in a state of evolution. Everything is moving. Everything is expanding. So yes, every, every life form is in a state of progression, whether nature spirits and elementals cross over and, 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 and move into being humans. That's probably very possible, but I don't know that that is the way things work. Everything has its own type of evolution. But remember, there's different realms. There are different dimensions. There's more than just three dimensional reality. So a lot of deities and, and nature spirits and, and elemental beings from our point of view seem very ancient and as if they are eternal in their own form. And one way of looking at, at, at a reason for why it seems that way is remember that every realm has its own sense of time. So um, what to us might seem like a hundred years in this realm might seem like a day in another realm. And this is where you get your, your stories of, of people crossing over into the realm of the fairy and spending a day in the realm of the fairy and coming back out into the mortal world. And it's 60 years later. And a very, uh, just a realistic, pragmatic, everyday understanding of how these kinds of, of things can, time shifts can happen is when you're in a realm of creativity and you're really engrossed in working on something that you enjoy, that maybe something creative, notice that it seems like maybe a moment has passed, but the whole day is gone. And conversely, when you're working on something that you don't want to be doing, it can seem like all day has occurred and it's only been five minutes. So time is very fluid and, and depending on what realm you're in, things evolve at different rates, uh, comparatively speaking. So yes, everything, I, my, it's my understanding that everything is progressing and everything is progressing at a, at a rate that is appropriate to its realm. And as far as whether things cross over from realm to realm, yes, very possibly and possibly not. So there you have it. I used to have a teacher that always said, that's a great question. And I recommend that you go home and meditate on that. <laughs> come home, come back and let us know what you get. Okay. So those are a couple questions. Um, if I haven't answered your question, it's because I have forgotten to. So please ask it again and I will get to it next week. And I um, want to get right into this next segment. Because for the next five weeks or so, we're going to get extremely into where the rubber meets the road in witchcraft. Okay, we're going to be building your magical power. We're going to be uh, actually building up your uh, ability to perform magic. And this is, um, this is where things really start happening. And this is where the work starts happening. So get ready to roll up your sleeves. These next five weeks are going to be intense for you if you actually are performing the work at hand and um, it's going to be a boot camp kind of experience. All right. So I invite you to enjoy the process. Don't let it get overwhelming. If it gets overwhelming, then take it a little slower. You don't have to do one lesson a week. You can uh, you can drag it out as long as you want to. And as, uh, as far as I know, these podcasts will stay up forever. So um you can take as long as you need to. There's no rush. But when when things start getting intense and, and the work starts, the workload starts increasing, this is where you, you know a lot of the, the looky-loos will drop out because they realize that in order to to uh, have magical power is is quite an undertaking. And it's very worthwhile and it's a wonderful. I, I consider it a lot of fun, but a lot of times people don't want to do the work and they'd rather just burn a candle or, or, um, you know, 
say an incantation, <laughs> they don't want to actually do the work that's necessary to actually create magical change in the world. All right. My uh, original book had one chapter and one week devoted to this, and I've actually expanded it into five weeks because I don't think one week is enough. We talk about, um, there's several authors that talk about what's called the witch's pyramid or the pyramid of power. And we're going to spend a long time developing this. We're going to spend five weeks developing this minimum. Uh, the, the pyramid is uh, consisting of, just imagine a pyramid, four sides of a pyramid with a point on the top. One side of the pyramid is will. One side of the, the pyramid is faith. One side of the pyramid is imagination. And one side of the pyramid is secrecy. And then the top of the pyramid is result, is, is, is manifestation. In, in using the, the, the witch's pyramid or the pyramid of power, really... It's barely just scratching the surface of what we what we need to do to build your power base. So we're going to take one side of, of the pyramid uh, per week, and it's actually a bit more than than just those four things. And what I what I like to uh, do is instead is in addition to seeing it as a pyramid, I like to view each of those qualities as one of the different elements: fire, water, air, and earth. And consider them as as four different bodies, four different magical bodies or d different layers of your magical body. And we're going to actually do some body building. We're going to actually build your magical body so that you uh, can have some some effectiveness in, in your magic. And you'll realize that once you build this, once you build your 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 power base, that all of the all of the spells and all of the you know the the oils and the incenses and the incantations and the you know the gems and and the waters and the powders and the and all of the stuff that comes along with magic, that they are powerful in that they are ways to focus your powers that you have built, but by themselves without having your powers built it's it's little more than play it's a little more than just a, a game where you don't get results all right so so it's important that we that we build first your base before we get into the trappings of spell casting so that you actually have results so this week we're going to be building the fire body which is anchored to the side of the pyramid that we call will that's the first part. Now, all all four are, uh, sides of the pyramid are of equal importance, and they have to be in balance. And you're going to find that it's, it's easier for you to, to develop certain aspects than other aspects of the pyramid, and it's very important that they be in balance. So if you find that you're having difficulty um, with one or more sides of this pyramid, that you take some extra time and care so that you have your powers built in balance. Otherwise, you're not going to be effective. So this fire body, uh, like I said, is anchored to the to the side of the pyramid called will. And the the will of a witch is a very important thing. And taken outside of a magical context, it could be almost seen as uh, a, the power of a megalomaniac. Very, it's very almost egocentric. It's it's very self-serving by itself, taken out of context. And so we don't want you to get so carried away with developing your willpower that you're out of balance. But for the next week, for this next week, for this next seven days, we're going to be building your fire body. We're going to be building your magical will. So it's really important that um, you try to keep everything very in focus and very much in perspective. Remember what we're doing here. We're building a magical will in order for you to have effective magic. We are not trying to turn you into an ego maniac. Okay? So... Remember that willpower by itself is always working, is always working in your life. You're always willing something to happen. But usually, for most people, that willpower is turned against themselves. Your willpower is very scattered and unfocused. And this week, what we're going to do is we're going to focus that willpower. So I want you to... Um, 
realize that this is probably one of the most important weeks of your life. What I want you to do is I want you to think of a bunch of different things that you've been putting off doing. A bunch of different things that you've been putting off doing. It could be cleaning out a drawer. It could be um, filing. It could be your taxes. It could be um, going to a doctor's appointment. Whatever it is, you know what it is. There's some things that you've been putting off doing, and I need you to write those down. So I want you to go ahead and, and take some time uh, over the next day and just make a list. Don't, tr- don't edit it. I want you to get it all out. All the things that you've been putting off doing that you know that, that you need to get done. And you're going to pick seven. You're going to pick seven. And, and the criteria f- uh, that, that you're going to use in, in choosing these seven, each one of these has to be able to be accomplished in one single day. So if your the item on your list is that you had to clean out your garage, well, if you know that that job is too big for one day, then you are either not going to put that on, on the list, you're not, going to, you're not going to choose that as one item, or you're going to choose part of that. You're going to say, I'm going to, ch- I'm going to clean out the, the first four shelves in my garage. Do you understand? So it's got to be able to be practically completed in one single day. Now, you're going to, when you decide you're ready to do this exercise, make sure that you're really ready to do it. Because once you start, you cannot stop. For the next, for, for, the, seven, for, the, for, the, for seven days after you've decided you're going to do this, you're going to choose one item and you're going to list it for each of the seven days of the week. And you are not going to go to sleep until that item has been accomplished. No matter what. No matter, nothing, no one, I don't care, a tsunami could come. It, it will not stop you from completing that task. Remember, this is not a traditional to-do list. You're not doing this because you should be doing these things. You're doing this because these things represent your building of your magical willpower. And you're going to do it. So that's the first step. You're going to get that list. You're going to choose seven items. And you're going to delegate one item for each of the seven days of the, of the week that you're, that you're working on your fire body. And you're going to do it. All right? Now, in addition to doing those seven things, I want you to start to think about willpower. I want you to start thinking about the element of fire as it relates to your magic. I want you to, for the next seven days, or for the seven days that you're working this exercise, that you're building this side of the power, to say no when you mean no, and say yes when you mean yes. You are not going to let anybody walk over you this week. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to be rude. This does not mean that you're going to be impolite. This does not mean that you're going to be mean. It means that you are going to be honest with yourself and with everybody in your life. And when somebody tries to manipulate you into doing something, you're going to set that boundary and you're going to say, no, thank you. You're going to say, no, thank you to the salesperson if you don't want that thing. You are going to say, no, thank you to your mate when they try to get you to do something that you don't want to do. Does that make sense? You're going to say yes when you mean yes, and you're going to say no when you mean no. And it's important that you realize that what you're doing is very important. It's essential to your effectiveness. And if it takes you more than a week to get this done, then take as long as it needs, because your willpower must be established. In addition, the will is also your power of concentration, your power to focus. So for uh, the first week, I'd like for you to take a moment within your meditations uh, or a few moments and build slowly and to do one of the following types of exercises or you can or you can make up your own. 
uh, you can light a candle and stare at the flame of the candle and keep your attention on that candle flame and do not allow your mind to wander. If it wanders, bring it back again and again to the candle flame. Another one that another thing that you can use is if you have a clock or a watch with a, a second hand on it or a digital uh, digital stopwatch, uh, set your set it for a minute and watch that that second hand or the or the or the counter going around for sixty seconds, and focus your attention exclusively on second to second to second, being very present within each second. And if your mind wanders, bring it back again and again and again. You can do the same thing by by choosing some sort of mantra and mentally repeating it over and over to yourself. And a one that I use often is blessed be. And you just close your eyes, focus your eyes up and in toward the third eye point of your forehead. Actually focus your physical eyes up and in toward the third eye and think the word blessed on the inhale and the word be on the exhale. Mentally think that over and over again. If your mind wanders, bring it back again and again and again until you can maintain 60 seconds without your mind wandering. Once you can obtain 60 seconds without your mind wandering, you can expand that so that you are doing it for longer and longer until you get to, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. It's it, it's not necessary that you go too, too long. It's just so that you can get used to what it feels like to focus and concentrate your mind on one point. So incorporate a concentration exercise every day within the context of your spiritual practice. And if you can maintain focus for 60 seconds, you're doing great. And if you can expand that, that's fine too. If you can't maintain it for 60 seconds, try sticking with this uh, for, for as many weeks as it takes until you can keep your focus for 60 seconds. In addition to willpower, remember that the fire body also represents your energy, your your energy within your body. And if you're not exercising your body regularly, then you are not going to be efficient magically. So you need to find some sort of exercise. Now, again, I'm not I, I don't know you. I don't know your health conditions and you need to deal with your own doctors and get their okay on any kind of exercise program because you need to uh, honor and respect whatever your present physical limitations are but at the same time you don't want to um you don't want to 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 buy into limitations that aren't existent either so some of the some of the best types of exercise for um that that work with magic well with magic are things like yoga Tai Chi, martial arts, uh, Scottish country dancing, um, any kind of dance, actually, ballet. Um, and, and then again, also, if, if none of those things are interesting to you, then weightlifting, aerobics, anything like that. But you must get your body moving. And that means cardiovascular moving, uh, strengthening your, the muscles in your body and stretching your body so that you have a free flowing energy in your body the electromagnetic current in your body is free flowing and this happens through exercise so if you're not doing any kind of exercise it's time to get going on that and again if that just means going for a walk around the block and doing some simple stretches that's fine but you've got to be realistic you you want to go a little bit further than you than you think is comfortable, but also you don't want to uh, injure yourself. Remember, the idea here is that we're building your magical will. It's so because you say it's so. You want to be able to to know that when you turn on your magical will, it's going to happen. So that's the reason why you're going to be you're you're going to be doing that will list. That's the reason why you're willing yourself to focus. That's that's the reason why you're willing yourself to exercise, right? Because you say so, it happens. That way once it t- comes time for you to do spell casting, you know that if you're willing something to be, it is going to be. So you start as small as you need to start, but you don't put anything on that list or you don't decide to will anything that doesn't happen 
So if if you say it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And this is where uh, when when you, when it's time for you to to deal with people and you and somebody asks you to do something, you don't want to do it. Say no because if you say yes, you have got to do it because you've said yes. A witch's word is a witch's word, and you always keep your word. A witch always keeps their word. If if you make a commitment, come hell or high water, you're going to be there. So don't make a commitment. Don't give your word. Don't say you're going to do something or be somewhere if you don't want to be there or if you don't plan on doing it. Say no, because everything that comes out of your mouth is truth. We tell the truth. Witches have to tell the truth. Not because of some, you know, some sort of moralistic reason, but because it's practical. When it comes out of our mouth, it's so. Our words then have power. Our will is focused. It's powerful. And everything that we say is going to happen, happens. So this is a very important week. Again, like we said, you're going to just recap it again. You're going to work on your will list. One thing a day for seven days. Very important that you, no matter what, that's going to happen. Each thing on that will list is going to happen. Don't don't let the sun come up the next day. Don't let yourself go to bed until you have accomplished that. And if you're not willing to do it, don't put it on the list. You're going to do some sort of exercise this week every day. Every day you're going to commit to some sort of physical exercise and you're going to get it taken care of. It should be some sort of strengthening, strengthening exercise, some sort of cardiovascular exercise, and some sort of stretching. Because you want your electromagnetic energy, you want your fire body to be free-flowing in your, in your body. You're going to be very clear with people this week. You're going to say yes when you mean yes, and you're going to say no when you mean no. And you're going to keep your word, and everything that comes out of your mouth is going to be honest. It's going to be the truth, and if it's not, if you can't tell the truth, then do not open your mouth. All right? So these are uh, some seemingly very simple exercises, but it's important that you understand that this is extremely important this week. It's extremely important that you build this side of the pyramid. Now, your magical will and your fire body, uh, from my perspective, will correspond to your athame. Correspond to your athame. So your magical tool for the week is the athame. If you have your athame, it wouldn't be a bad idea to meditate with the athame in your hands every day for the the seven days to to get in tune with your magical will, to tune your magical will with the tool. Now, if you don't have some sort of spiritual practice that you've started, that's fine. Get one going. And it doesn't have to be a very big deal because we'll get we'll get more of the big deal later. But just make sure that you have some sort of spiritual purification that we discussed in the first week, some sort of grounding and centering, some sort of trance work every day, some sort of meditation or trance work. And I've given you some tools that I find very helpful with the spiritual purifications, the grounding and centering exercise, and the orb of light, the, um, the, the orb of power exercise. So doing those three things, uh, one of those three things, or doing those, those three things together uh, will take you maybe 10 to 20 to maybe 30 minutes a day. And while you're meditating in your orb of power, go ahead and, and, and hold on, if you have it, to your athame and absorb the power of fire every day. Work on your magical will list and uh, get some exercise going and don't let yourself be walked all over this this week. And you're going to be well on your way to being extremely, extremely powerful if you start off with this properly. Well, I hope this has been of some help to you. I probably am not going to be... Um, posting meditations for the next four weeks because the exercises that I'm asking you to do are going to be time consuming enough. And I do not want you to get tempted to, um, to just listening to a guided meditation when you should be working on these other things. Remember, this is, well, like I said, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is extremely important, very powerful, very, very powerful next five weeks. All right. Thank you very much for listening. I love talking to you. Love and many blessings. 